born in Hanover, Germany, married a South African. Loves Marburg. 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 Marburg, Germany. I thought it was Hanover. No, I live in Hanover now. Oh, but I have a house. No, you don't live in Hanover now. You yeah, live no, where? Port Elizabeth. Yep, you're correct. And this is the bit that freaks me out the most, is that you actually love Port Elizabeth. I think it's the most phenomenal town. I mean, I love South Africa and I love uh, Port Elizabeth specifically because it's such an underrated town. We, we haven't even introduced you. I mean, which I'm being very, very rude. But I mean, Thomas Schaefer, as the chairman of Volkswagen Group here in South Africa, you're not just saying you love Port Elizabeth because this is kind of where you're producing cars. What is it about PE that you like? I mean, you've worked and lived in some of the greatest cities in the world. What makes this place special? Yeah, look, um, Port Elizabeth is, is such a um, quaint town that you have the beaches, you've got uh, wonderful um, living areas, um, you know, everybody is so worried about the wind or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you can't beat this, you get everywhere, there's no traffic jams, it's, it's the most unbelievable place. Well, yeah. look, at, look at today, this is winter. Yeah, Lovely, win winter yeah. in South Africa, I mean, how about that? Look, it's not that I would yeah. want to be outside the car, because I'm yeah. quite happy in our, in our office for the day, the new Golf R. Hey, that is one thing that South Africans have always embraced, VW product, uh, whether it be the City Golf, uh, but in particular, GTIs, our performance mentality, and now we're sitting in the top one the Golf R. What is it about this product in particular that, that you think really speaks to South Africans? Look, I mean, South Africa has the highest amount of uh, GTI and R in, in, in the Golf sold. So you know we've been selling um, about more than 60% of the of the Golf that we sell in South Africa are oh, GTI and R. Yeah, performance. And now, yeah, so and, and South Africans love it. It's, it's an iconic car, not only in South Africa, but also all over the world. So now with this new, with the R now and the GTIs with the facelift that we brought out, um, with the increased infotainment and a little bit more power, geez, people and, love it. And obviously extending that range too to GTD. I mean, that's been massively popular in Europe, so now that's offered in South Africa for the first time too. But it's so funny, there is, I was speaking to you the other night about Vrpa. Which, yeah. is, which is the sound that a GTI makes, which I mean, that is... Almost a trademark, right? It, it yeah. is, that's what, yeah. people are, that's what people are buying into, which is, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a bit about, about the production landscape and how things are in South Africa now. I mean, VW obviously set up operation here many, many years ago. Yeah, things, things have changed dr dramatically. Would it be fair to say that if VW was looking to set up a production facility, Port Elizabeth wouldn't be the place, Utenag wouldn't, and certainly probably South Africa neither? Uh, the reality is that um, uh, the production environment, global production environment, is extremely competitive. Um, you have regions in the world that, um, like for example China, uh, Turkey for them, all that matters, um, or North Africa, Morocco, uh, they have extremely good policies, automotive policies that, um, that attract investment, that, that give you a massive incentive to set up shop. And, um, the automotive world is not is not a level playing ground. Even um, like uh, uh, Korea gives massive in incentives. The U.S. gives incentives. So uh, South Africa has got a great automotive um, uh, policy, the APDP program, um, which brought us basically, uh, you know, it keeps us in South Africa. Um, but it's it's not on a level that for new entrants it would entice them to come here. So I, I know you are very instrumental in. in those negotiations with government and with mm. players like NUMSA in terms of just understanding the importance of keeping production yeah. in South Africa. I mean, I know you've taken them to Australia because we certainly don't want that situation to happen. Are you seeing positives for the future? I know General Motors obviously pulled out of South Africa production on a way smaller scale. People must be nervous that, oh, let's hope, you know, this doesn't happen with VW. No, we, we're here to stay. I mean, that's a very clear commitment. We have uh, invested heavily over the last two years now again into this facility, the new Polos and Vivos that will come out by the end of the year. Um, we are committed to this country. Look, what, what happened with, uh, with, with other com competitors like General Motors, you have to look at it individually. Is there a, a strategy going forward? Do you invest in product? Um, we have made a very clear strategy for this location. We've been here for 65 years, yeah. and um, we are pushing from here into Africa. So that's our, our future. Exporting from here and other parts of the world, that's nice. But you, you fight against locations like China, India, Mexico, that are highly competitive. Well, I, I imagine, I'm glad you mentioned the Africa thing, because I mean, just think about it, yeah, we sit literally on the tip of, away from everyone. Yeah. But you're making cars that you're exporting, you've got to send them a long way to get to target market, which isn't ideal. It would make sense that Africa is the footprint, but, but that is expansion. But 
Africa hasn't been a great market. I mean, things that aren't looking good there. How do we change Africa? How does VW ensure that product is getting pushed into that market? Yeah, it's, it's, I always laugh about that because it's, it's like the, the story with that uh, visitor came to Africa, saw a lot of people without shoes and said, well, there's no market for shoes. So we, we, <laughs> versus there's a lot of opportunity. So, exactly. So when I look at, uh, at Africa and having been now to many African countries, looking at what happens mainly in the cities, in the great cities, um, there is a lot of opportunity, a lot of young people. Um, the reason why it hasn't really taken off so far is um, predominantly there's extremely bad fuel in these countries. Okay. Uh, there's a, a, a massive influx or almost ex ex exclusive use of, of used cars. Yeah, so That's not because dump, it's a dumping ground. It's a dumping ground specifically for seven, uh, eight year old vehicles from Japan that cannot be uh, used in Japan. They can run on the old fuel, I suppose, as well. Not really, actually. Yeah. No, but they get actually dumped in Japan and, and people don't know what to do with them, so they bring them to Africa. Okay. Um, so that is not the future and some of the African countries have realized that they don't want to be the dumping ground, they want to create jobs, they have a massive issue with youth unemployment, um, they want to set up automotive production and uh, that's what we're talking to with them. So, so used cars are an issue, bad fuel is an issue and on the other side there's no financing. Uh, okay. In South Africa about 60-70% of our cars are actually financed. Finance. Uh, here in Africa people would have to fork out uh, $20,000 up front to buy a car which they don't have but they have got maybe 500 a month they can spend on it. But I suppose it's important to get them to understand that there's a potential for them to grow their economy. So would it be a case of you produce the car here but they fit it together when it gets to that African market to encourage growth there? Or how that, do you do that? That'll that? be the initial step. Yeah. Now, usually auto, automobile production really starts at about 100,000 cars per year. That's where you can localize parts, uh, that's where you have economies of scale, so that 100,000. But I mean, to get there, we do at the moment 120,000 cars in South Africa plus another 120,000 engines, including export. Um, and we are ramping up now to 160, 170,000 cars. Um, and, and that makes it then feasible. So the rest of Africa will grow, perhaps, maybe not yeah. individually to that level, but um, to get them there, you will start with, a, with an assembly, which we will feed from South Africa. So we will create, we will, it will create jobs in South Africa but it will also create jobs in the country. It will, will be the necessary automotive nucleus that will start them into manufacturing. Thomas, this for me is, is unbelievable. I mean, I, you really have been a breath of fresh air, I think, in the industry and obviously for VW as well. Not only pushing things in this town, but also just understanding the future and that Africa is a critical model because that's what's going to make a production business sustainable here. So that is really cool. But is this what you thought you would do when you were growing up? I mean, what, what, what was what is your background? What did you study? Was, well, were you a car nut? Are you a petrol head? Yeah, look, I absolutely are. I mean, it's, it's the biggest benefit of working in a company like that, obviously. You know. <laughs> Take your uh, pick. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I, I started, um, actually I didn't know what to, what to do after school. I was a little bit confused when you know, I come from a um, really like middle class family from uh, from a small town uh, that nobody can pronounce. Uh, you know, I was supposed to take over my father's butchery and you know, then I figured, well, it's not really for me. So I, one day in the paper, there was an article about um, like a, like a sponsor, sponsored um, fast track studying at, um, at industry, at specific industry players and uh, like Bosch, Siemens, uh, Mercedes. And, um, and I signed up, uh, you know, the massive tests and uh, whatever, and I got the job. So I still don't know why I got it, but I got it. And uh, I, st I started with Mercedes and spent 22 years with them, which was a great time. Look, we shouldn't be talking about competitive brands, no. but I mean, it is through Mercedes-Benz that, that you met your wife. Absolutely. Now, I was uh, seconded to uh, South Africa in 1998 um, to run quality in, in the East London plant. And uh, I still say it's the best thing that could ever happen to me. And I met my wife, who worked in HR at the time, and she really looked well after me. So, and then you you, you talk about having your pick of cars. Um, what what's Wendy's drive of choice? What does she like? Now, Wendy, being a, a farm girl from uh, Kumka outside East London, she um, don't tell me. No, she wanted an Amarok. So it was for the her it was a pickup, and uh, it was wanted an Amarok. So. At the moment, however, I, I got I got into an Audi Q3. Yeah. She wanted to drive something else in town with the dogs and all, but um, she's still uh, you know, a Bucky fan. You talk about having a, a choice of cars that you get to drive. I'm imagining in your in your career in the industry, you've driven some special machines. What's a what's a standout car for you? 
Um, I would say like the the most unbelievable car I've ever been in was probably the Bugatti Veyron. Um, <laughs> have you, but, have but, you driven it? Yes. I know you're just actually irritating me properly now because I mean that, that's a question that everyone asks Bugatti Bugatti because we just don't have them in South Africa. Yeah. You've driven a Veyron. Yeah, and you you get the you have to work hard to get the key to make you drive real fast. So, Is there two keys in that car? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So the one goes to 300, the other one to 420. And you yeah. had both keys. Yeah, of course. But, <laughs> but, it, but it's, 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 it's yeah, a, of course. It's, it's such a car that's so so wildly more than anything else out there um, when you drive it. Um, so it's not for like you and me every day use. Yeah. So it's the most exciting car. The, the other one that still my absolute favorite car is the RS5 Cabriolet Audi. I had it as a company car here in South Africa. This must be like the most exciting <laughs> company car I've ever had. We, we recently chatted with uh, with uh, Trevor from Audi, who's heading up the Division 9. He actually said to me, I must ask you about that, because he obviously wants to push Audi. Yeah, he, yeah. Said to me, he said to me, he knows that you, he knows that you love that car. Yeah, yeah. I've got a new, brand new um, S5 Cabriolet now. Yeah. Um, it and suits our climate too. I mean, absolutely. You know, it's per we perfect for winter, winter yeah, convertible weather. Beautiful. Summer's just hot, but at night it's perfect. Yeah. And uh, that must be one of the the best cars I've been driving as company cars in the last yeah. couple of years, I must say. And of course, the Amarok. Absolutely. <laughs> You have married the perfect woman. I mean, as I said, yeah, your, your father's a butcher. You've come from that sort of background. You, you couldn't have done any better than a woman who seems very grounded, very down to earth. Is that is that important for you? I mean, you don't have any kids at the moment. No. Uh, your lifestyle has been hectic with all with all the traveling. Uh, what countries have you lived in? Well, I lived in uh, a few countries. Uh, I lived in the uh, US, in uh, South Africa, obviously, in Malaysia. Um, I've, and I moved all the time between all sorts of countries. I looked after overseas production at Mercedes, but then also later at Volkswagen, and that made me travel to virtually every country in the world. To, my, my trade is really setting up operations in emerging markets. That's why I've seen a lot of funny countries as well. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's, it's so difficult to, to, to have some form of normality, I suppose, in how you live your life. So what is your, what is your de-stress? You know, whether you're in Malaysia or you're traveling on a business trip, you look like you're healthy, you look after yourself. Oh, what, look, what, uh, what gives you that de-stress? Because it is a high-powered, stressful environment you're in. Look, I, I love um, running. I, I run almost every morning. I get up very early. and uh, Run to work? No, not quite. <laughs> it's, like a mini, it's like a mini comrade. <laughs> no, 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 no. I run my 10Ks almost every morning. And, uh, I mean... I've got a I've got a wonderful wife who makes sure that I can do all the, the crazy traveling and you know keep my life together. I've got a very stable environment, and if I if I don't have to travel or anything, I actually stay at home. I enjoy that. Play a little of golf. I love my wine, South African wines. Yeah. yeah. So, so I still can't believe they, they sent me back to South Africa. <laughs> like. Uh I mean, to, to end, we've actually we've gone over our 10 minutes already because it's so, it's so quick and easy chatting with you. It does seem like you've, you've done that full circle. I mean, it's obviously home for, home for Wendy, but it sounds like it's, it's home for you too. This is more home for me than, than Germany by far, and I'm not intending to leave. I like that. Why should I? There's we've, so much opportunity. We, we, we've, we've got that on camera. You don't intend to leave. What more do you need? Good meat, good wine, good wife, good cars, good Love weather. opportunity. And Volkswagen crazy customers. <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect.